Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. <laughs> Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost plays. Drama, comedy, adventure, mystery, melodrama. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. Before we tell you about tonight's play, Elliot and I want to thank all of you for the lovely letters you've written to us. All of the letters. The complimentary ones and the critical ones. We do appreciate your taking the time to write, and we thank you. And now for tonight. There are certain conditions under which it becomes necessary to call the police. Some people abuse the privilege and call Wolf constantly and on any pretext... And some people don't want any trouble, and in trying to prevent there being any trouble, they hesitate making a positive action like calling the police. And that, very briefly, is what is going to happen tonight. The story is called Eddie, and it was written by E. Jack Newman. Scene, a street, a car parked at the curb in front of a cafeteria. In the car, a young man smoking a cigarette. As the clock on the dashboard of the car passes nine, the door to the cafeteria opens, and a young lady walks out into the street. She looks around for a minute and then starts to walk towards the bus station at the corner. Hey! Hey, Melva, over here. What? Here, Melva, over here. Hiya. Do I know you? No. Sure you do, Melva. My name's Eddie. Here, hop in. Come on. Oh, you. Little old me. Come on, get in. I'll drive you home. What's wrong? You think I'm crazy or something? I don't even know you. Well, I just told you my name's Eddie. Come on. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? I'm still sitting here alone. Well. Yeah, I'm harmless. Nothing to be afraid of at all. Now then, where to, Melva? Home. H-O-M-E, home. Get it? Home it is. It's on 6th Street, 500 block. Turn left to the next corner, then straight ahead. Okay. You're the boss. 521 6th Street. Turn right. Yeah, okay. Is there, uh, uh, anything, any little thing I can say or do that'll change your mind, Melva? Change my mind about what? About taking you home? It's a swell night, and a couple of friends of mine... Oh, Lord... You do this all the time. Do what? What do you mean? Look, I've seen you in the cafeteria three or four times this week. Every time you came by my check stand, you had some remark to make. You found out my name. I don't know how. And now you waited for me to get off work tonight. You got me in your car, and you think the whole thing's settled. Let me tell you what you think is going to happen isn't going to happen at all. Not on your life. Oh, sir. Oh, no, you got it all Don't wrong. Don't think for one minute that I'd be sitting here in this car with you for any other reason than that I... I had a hard day and I can use a lift home. Well, I guess you got me squared away, huh? Uh-huh. But I still want to take you out. Where'll we go? What is it with you, anyhow? Well, it's just that I got a surprise for you, Melva. Oh, no. Oh, no, you haven't, big boy. You may think you have, but you haven't. Not on your life. Honest. Oh, no. No, sirree. No, no, seriously. Today, I told a couple of people that you were my girl. I told them you and me got along just fine and that we'd meet them later on this evening and have some fun. What do you think of that? I think you're crazy. What do you think of that? Well, I... I don't know you from that signboard over there, and you don't know me. How do you know I'm not married? No rings. Are you? Let me see your hand. Keep driving. Melva. What? 
I found out your name by taking a table right near the railing and listening for that boss of yours when he talked to you. If I made cracks at you, I was only trying to get you to notice me. And I was out front waiting for you this evening because I asked a busboy and he told me you got off at nine. Now, that's a little trouble to go to just to get a brush off. It's the way it goes. I even rented this car and put on my best suit. Now, what's a guy supposed to do when he sees a girl he'd like to meet and know? What's he going to do? Pass her up because nobody's around to introduce him? You don't look like the kind who ever passed anybody up. I wanted to know you, Melva. I went at it the only way I could think of. Now, that's the whole story. You're a pretty good talker, Eddie. I try to be. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah? I could probably like you. You look nice enough. You seem to get along okay. But I wouldn't let myself like you because I see something else. What's that? I don't think you're any good. I just don't think you're any good at all. I suppose you've used that on a few other guys in your time. I suppose I have. I always meant it when I said it. Slow down. Uh... The brown one, right over there. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, good night. Thanks for the ride. Oh, wait, Melva. For what? I want to talk to you. Oh, no, you certainly aren't going no, to listen. try to... No, listen. Listen. I feel in your direction... I wanted to see you tonight and have you meet my friends because I've been in this town four weeks now and I don't know one girl. I'd like to know you. If you won't go out with me tonight, that's okay. Maybe you'll go out with me some other night. That's up to you, you know? But right now, I'd... I'd like to have you kiss me like you meant it. Are you kidding? Thanks for the lift. Good night. <laughs> Hello, Melva. I went and got you some flowers. Well, I'll be darned. Here, for you. I don't want your flowers. What's the matter with you? I said goodbye to you once tonight. Oh, no, wait a minute, Melva. It's 11 o'clock. I've got a lot of things to do tomorrow. Now, you go. Away. Oh, Melva, wait a minute. Well, all right. What? What, for heaven's sakes, do you want? Just to see you. Well, take a look. That's all you get. Good night. You were sore when you left me tonight, weren't you? Can't you get it through your head? It doesn't make any difference. No difference at all. Now, now will you please... That's probably the manager complaining about the noise. Gosh, I didn't mean to make any noise. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Robbins? Yes, of course, and I'm terribly sorry. Yes? Good night. That was the manager, and she's had a couple of complaints already. Now, will you get out of here and let me get some sleep? Go go meet your friends. Well, I don't want to meet him without you. After all, I told him about you and everything. Go, please, go, go. Just go away. Go on. Well, do you want the flowers? Yeah, thanks. They're they're very nice, Eddie. Now, good night. I don't don't want to get thrown out of here on account of you. Goodbye. What? What do you want now? Can I see you tomorrow? We have nothing in common, you and I. There's nothing for us to talk about or do together. We just aren't it. Why don't you find another girl somewhere? I want you. Shh, shh, shh. Not so loud. I want you, Melva. Come here. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you once and for all. No. I should never have let you drive me home tonight, but I, I was so tired. I, I didn't like the idea of standing up on a bus all the way here. That's all there was to it. I'm sure there are 1,800 girls around this town are just dying for somebody like you to come along on a night like this. Why don't you go find a bar somewhere and have yourself a drink and look things over? You'll find somebody, and then you you can meet your friends. This is a pretty nice apartment, Melva. And I don't want you in it. Go home. Now, good night. I don't suppose you have a bottle of beer or something around. I don't suppose I have. Go on now. I'm getting angry now. I haven't done anything. Well, you've made a pest of yourself already. You've just... 
it's the manager again. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Robbins. Y yes, he he's leaving right now. I, I know the rules. Good night. Now, now you get out of here just as fast as you can. You really mean it? I really it? mean it. Now, go on, go on. How about tomorrow? No, no, not tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. Now, listen, I'll call the police if you don't leave right now. I'll leave, Melva. I'll leave. Don't worry. You won't have to call any police. Well, then go. When I get good and ready. That's when I'll go. I kind of like it here. We'll see about that. I want the police. They'll make an awful ruckus around here. You just wait. Oh, Gladstone 3962. Yes. You just wait. You don't want to do that. Don't I? Oh, don't I? Manager's going to be kind of sore no matter who's right or who's wrong. Just wait. Now, listen, this is your last chance. Will you go now or do I have them come out and get you? Okay, Melva, I'll go. Hello. I'm sorry to have bothered you. No, no, there's nothing wrong. All right. Now, there's the door. Yeah. Melva? What? Can't we be friends? No. Are you sure you aren't handing us a lot of baloney? I tell you, I just left her. She said she had to change clothes is all. Didn't want to go out in the dress she was working in. Why didn't you wait there while she changed? Well, she always takes so long, I thought I'd drop in here and meet you guys, have a beer. Then you're going all the way back out to her place and pick her up and bring her back here? Oh, it isn't so far. It's just over at 521 6th Street. 521, huh? Yeah. So, Mike, this turned out to be... You said you had it all fixed with Melva. You had a date with her, and she was going to get a couple of friends for me and Walt. Now it's almost 12 o'clock midnight. You show up with no dates for us, but without her, too. You weren't giving us a line about her ready. Well, why do I want to do that? Why? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, Tony and I have been waiting here for an hour. Didn't she know she was going out with you tonight? Well, of course she knew. What's the matter with you guys? When I go back to pick her up, we'll get the girl she has for you, and then we can all go out. You know what I think? What? I think you don't even know her. I know her. What are you talking about? You've handed me and Tony so much hot air since you've been working at the parking lot that we don't know whether to believe anything you say or not. Right, Tony? Right. We want action. Yeah. How about it? Melva's changing her clothes. Look, you've been here a half an hour. She's had time to change. Why don't you go over and get her right now and bring those two girlfriends of hers along? Yeah, Eddie. She's had plenty of time. Oh, well, I want another beer. Oh, let's leave this joker, Tony. Yeah. No, wait. Oh, we've had enough. So long, Eddie. Hey, guys, don't. No, no, huh? Save it, save it. Yeah, for Tony's beer in mind, you can pop for your own. Come on, Tony. Yeah. Oh. You want another, buddy? What? Oh, yeah. Sure. This is Eddie Myers. Now, you listen to me. I'll be there in 15 minutes. You better have some clothes on and be ready to go out with me. So help me. You're going out with me tonight. listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Eddie. You won't want to be anywhere else but where you are now later this evening when CBS Radio presents The Bing Crosby Show with Bing's special guests, Dinah Shore and Fiddlin' Joe Venuti. It's Bing and Dinah in solos and duets that will capture your heart tonight at the Star's Address. <laughs>
minute. What? Oh, Melba. So dark here in the lobby, I can only see a cigarette. You ready to go? No, I'm not ready to go. I've been trying to get ready to go to bed for the last hour. I was going to phone the police after you phoned, but I decided to wait for you down here instead. Aren't you going to go out with me? No, I am not going out with you. Tonight or any other night. Now, you just turn right around and get on out of here and leave me alone. I don't want you phoning or coming by or anything else. And if I see you in the cafeteria again, I'll complain to Mr. Ross, and he'll have you taken care of. You sure make it hard for a guy. I want you to go. Don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. Who's that? Who's out there in the hall? It's me, Mrs. Robbins. Melva. Oh. Everything all right? Yes, everything's fine. It's past 12, Melva. I know, Mrs. Robbins. You've already disturbed some of the people in the building. I'm sorry. Has your friend left yet? He's just leaving, Mrs. Robbins. No, I'm not. You... I'm sure everything's all right, Melvin. Oh, everything's fine. Who are you? I'm a friend of hers. Who are you? I'm the manager here. Are you the one who's been causing all of the trouble? What trouble? He's leaving right now, Mrs. Robbins. I haven't caused any trouble. I came to see Melva. Is there a law against that? We don't, don't allow visitors in any of the apartments after 10 o'clock at night. Didn't you see the sign? What sign? It's right there. People have been drinking. Not a drop. Have you? Don't get smart with me, young man. My husband's sleeping right inside that doorway, and I wouldn't hesitate to call him if you can't keep a civil tongue in your head. Call him. I'd like to meet him. Will you shut up? No, call him. Melva, we don't like people like this visiting here and breaking our rules. I didn't ask him to come and see me, Mrs. Robbins. He just came. Uninvited. Then why don't you go? I guess because I want to meet your husband. Keep your voice down. People are trying to sleep in this building. They have to get up and go to work tomorrow morning. Why don't you go back to bed so we can finish talking about what we were talking about? Shut Melba. up. It'll be all right, Mrs. Robbins. He's, he's, he's just leaving. You, you go back to your apartment. I'll, I'll talk to him. I don't like this kind of thing going on around here. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Robbins. I can phone the police, you know. Yeah, I know. And I'll do it too, Melba, if I have to. I want this young man out of here in two minutes. If he hasn't left by then, I'll phone the police, and you'll have to find a new place to live. Uh, all right, Mrs. Robbins. Now, look what you've done. I haven't done anything. What's the matter with the old batch? You pay your rent, don't you? What's she got to be blowing her horn off about? Go. Just get out of here. Hey, you want to smoke? No. I, I mean, no. Will you go? I guess I'm out of matches. I'll let her phone the police. I swear I will, and she'll do it, too. If I'm going to be thrown out, I'd just soon have you thrown in. Now, you go. Why didn't you go out with me tonight? Because I was tired. I I didn't want to go out with you or anybody else. If it had been another night, maybe? If you'd been rested up and not feeling so bad, you might have gone out with me? Yes, 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 yes. Go. Please, go. I picked a bad night, huh? You picked a bad night. We could still get in my car and go to a drive-in or something and have a sandwich. What do you say? No. Oh, come on. It's pretty warm out. No. I don't want to go anywhere with you. Can't you get that through your head? Why? What's the matter with me? <sighs> She's going to call the police. You just watch. What's your last name, Melva? I saw it on the mailbox, but I forgot. What difference does it make? I might want to write you a letter sometime. She's going to call them, I tell you. I'm hungry. Let's go up to your apartment and raid the icebox. I'm huh? tired of fooling with you, mister. You can just stay here in the lobby just as long as you want to. I don't care. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to go to bed. If she calls the police, it's your funeral, not mine. You just stay right here as long as you like, just as long as you like. She'll call them. Believe me, she will. So you'll be as smart as you like with them. They know how to handle people like you. Melva? 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 Uh, she's gone upstairs. Are you still here? Just leaving. Well, you should be. Why don't you mind your own business and go to bed? I won't be talked to like that. You get out of this lobby and don't let me ever see you here again. Oh, go to bed. Hi, Eddie. Tony. Walt. Hi. Where's Melva? She's upstairs. Where's the girl she was going to get for us? 
She gone, but you guys ran out on me, so... Hey, no, pig's eye. Uh, here we are. No, that's all off. Told us where she lived, so we went out and had a beer and decided to come over here. Well, she hasn't got any friends for you now. Not this late. Late? Only a quarter of one. Shank, good evening. Well, you're out of luck. Looks like you're out of luck, too. Why? Oh, dolled up. And leaving her this early. <laughs> you two have a fight? We never fight. We get along fine. How long you say you've known her already? Ever since I've been in town. How'd you meet her? Just the way I told you. She works at the cafeteria, and I walked up to her, told her my name, said I'd like to take her out. Mm. We've been going steady ever since. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Gee, I wish I had your touch with the women, Eddie. Yeah, me too. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? It's pretty early to be leaving a girl you're going steady with. Who says I'm leaving? I say you're leaving. Well, you're wrong. I'm not. That's so? I just came down to get something out of the car. Like what? Uh, some keys. I left some keys in the car. They must be in here somewhere. Look in the ignition. This is my house key. I guess I didn't leave them here at that. Well, I gotta get back upstairs, fellas. Uh-huh. I'll, uh... I'll see you later, huh? Yeah, sure. Now, I'm sorry about your dates. Make it some other time, huh? Oh, sure. Uh, by the way, uh, what was my girl's name? Gloria. Uh, yours was Betty. Betty what? Oh, I don't know her last name. Well, I'll see you, fellas. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I just waited up to see if you tried to sneak back here or not. You turn around and get out of here. Go on, get out. Shut up. You shut up, you old woman. You shut up and you go back to bed. Melva? Melva? Hey, hey. Hey, let me in, Melva. You stupid. Undo this chain and let me in. I will not. Now, listen, my two friends are downstairs, the ones I told all about you. They don't think you know me, that we go together. They're right. We don't go together. We never did and we never will. Come on, open this. You're crazy. But that's what's the matter with you. You're just crazy. I'm going to phone the police for sure this time. You open it. You'll be stuck. Oh, come on, come on. You crazy darn fool. Why didn't you go out with me? All I wanted you to do was go out with me and have a couple of laughs. It wouldn't hurt you. You've gone out with a lot of men. Don't come near me. You work from one to nine every day, sitting there on a stool behind a cash register six days a week. A guy comes along and offers to take you to a movie or dancing or something like that, and right away you get huffy about it. It's more important for you to hang around here in this apartment and remember how good you were getting rid of them than it is to put on a dress and go out and have some fun. Get out of here. They would have seen you with me, and then everything would have been all right. I tried to be nice to you, to do things for you, but no, you had to be so smart. No. No, you get away. You stupid you little away. dame. Get why away. wouldn't you go out with me? Why? Why wouldn't you go out with me? Why wouldn't you? Why? That's all I asked you to do was go out with me. Why wouldn't you? you? Hey, Melva. Hey, hey, Melva. Melva. Uh, police department? Hello, uh, Sergeant who? Uh, Sergeant? Uh, my name's Eddie Myers. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, uh, will you listen to me a minute? And then I'll tell you. Yeah, or listen to me. Uh, my name's Eddie Myers. And I came here a month ago from Omaha. 
I got a job in a parking lot making 32 bucks a week. I didn't know anybody except the guys I worked with. And I told them I had a girl here. I, I had one in mind, and I tried to get her to go out with me tonight, but she wouldn't do it. Uh, 521 6th Street, apartment 22. Listen, though. Uh, I bought a new suit, and I rented a car. I did everything to show her that I was a nice guy, but, but uh, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't go out with me. Well, this is her place. No, mine doesn't matter, Sergeant. I killed her. Well, I had to kill her. No, she wouldn't be my girl, Sergeant. Sergeant, will you listen? Every guy has to have a girl, don't you think? Eddie, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. Tomorrow night, CBS Radio's documentary production staff goes into action to bring you, over most of these same stations, an exciting, challenging view of what's likely to happen if any or all our major cities in the United States came under atomic attack. How effective is our present military defense network? Could we, today, if necessary, successfully handle the frightful aftermath of atomic attack? The answers to these and many other pressing questions should be clear tomorrow night when CBS Radio presents the special program, Bomb Target USA, narrated by Arthur Godfrey. Now once again, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. And that was the story of Eddie, the author E. Jack Newman who is able to make the normal terrifying. Our thanks also this evening to the gentleman who thought Eddie was getting a date for them, Clayton Post and Jerry Hausner. And to Peggy Weber, landlady at Melva's apartment house. Away from all of this next week, when we present a new comedy by Morton Fine and David Friedkin called Dig the Thief. It's about a very old bunco trick and an amusing way of breaking it, and we're going out west to prove our point. Until next week, thank you for listening, and good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed by Fred Steiner and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble, and the program is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Wall speaking. America's 45 million radio families listen most to the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>